we are going to go through this one like a storm because I want to get to the second beast. Alright? We want to get to the lamb-like beast in Revelation chapter 13, ultimately. But here's what we're going to do. Go to Revelation chapter 12. Now, do you remember what we read last time? What, did, what does Revelation chapter 12 begin with? It begins with a woman. A certain woman who is beautiful, right? A beautiful woman. And she has garments. She has clothes. Can you tell me what she was wearing? Clothes with the sun. She's number one. She's clothed with the sun. Mm -hmm. Moon under her feet. Ah, uh -huh. clothed with the sun. Number two, she has the moon under her feet. Yeah. And a crown of twelve stars. Ah, uh -huh. moon under the feet. And a crown. Head, head, head. The head and the crown of twelve, 12 stars. stars. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. So now we're trying to understand exactly who this woman is. Now, tell me this so far. Her clothing, the sun, right? That's her garment. Mm -hmm. The sun, on her, on, on her head, a crown of 12 stars. I'm just going to highlight just the, the, these, these celestial objects. Mm -hmm. And under her feet is what? The moon. Mm -hmm. The moon. Now, we see three, three things. What are they? Sun. Moon. Sun, mm -hmm. sun is sun. number one. What else? Moon. 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 And stars. stars. What are these objects called? Luminaries. These are luminaries, right? Luminaries. luminaries. All right. Let them be light. So, when you think of these luminaries, it's it, it's quite interesting in the like it, it's quite interesting that when we look again, the Bible begins with saying, "And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet." And upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Sun, moon, and stars. Now, can anybody be able to think of where in the Bible, where in this exact same order we see sun, moon, and stars? Creation. Creation. Go to the book of Genesis. Go to Genesis. And we're going to, be, to the very first chapter. Genesis chapter 1. And I want you to start reading. Read loud and clear, Eli, from verse number 14. What does it say? Then God said, Let there be light in the firmament of the, of the heavens to divide the day from the night. Pause. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the what? Day. The day from the Holy night. Alright? And then what else? What is it going to say? What's the next verse? Keep yeah. reading. Yeah. Read verse 15. Or read, look, and leave, I can read verse 15. So 15. And let them be for light in the firmament moment of the heaven to give light upon the earth and it was so. Okay. So, in Genesis chapter, we just found out in Genesis chapter 1 verse 14 to 15, the Bible says God created light. And where did he put these lights in? In the firmament. In the, in, in the firmament, right? In the firmament of the heavens. I'll just I'll just leave it at firmament. And then what's the what's the next? What's the, what's the next verse? Verse 15, it says what? And let and let them be for lights in the firmament uh -huh. of the heaven to give light upon the earth to give light upon the earth right they illuminate the earth that's a key 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 characteristic it is to give light for to what to give light upon the on earth all right next verse 16 um Naomi want to read, want to read it not loud and clear then God made two great lights uh -huh. The greater light to rule, to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Do you see that? God, then God made... What? Two great lights, two right? Great lights. All right, so we just found out in verse 16, God made, God made two great lights. Right? The greater to rule the day, the greater... Okay. For the day, and then the le the the lesser. For the night. Okay. Now, when you look at when you look at this, 
What's that telling you? Which, which, what light is the daylight? Sun. The sun, right? So this one is the sun. And what is the lesser light? The moon is the night? Moon. Okay, this is the moon. And the stars. And he made the stars also. And he made the stars also. Do you see the pattern, mm -hmm. right? He, and then the stars came last. Yeah. Right? Does, does, does he put any, anything significant about the sun, the, the stars? I mean, no. He just said it. Just says, and he made the stars also, right? So, the sun, moon, and stars all created on the fourth day of the week. That's what that answers your question. Yeah. When you were, when you were talking earlier about you know. So now here's the thing. We see the woman is clothed with the sun, moon, and stars, and now we see the firmament has lights in it, and there are two great lights. One. Is the one is the one is the sun and then always the other is the moon and then the stars. Next, I want you to go, now go to the book of uh, Ephesians. Go to Ephesians chapter five. Isn't it interesting how God made the sun on the fourth day? It's the fourth commandment people are thinking. Mm. That's actually a good point. Uh, for the people who are in it, yes. Mm. Actually, I did. That, that's an interesting one. So, so this brought up an interesting point. She said that. It's, isn't it interesting that God made the sun on the fourth day, right? On the, you know, God made the, the, the sun and the moon and the stars. He made the sun on the fourth day of the week. And it just happened to be the fourth commandment that people are, are breaking by worshiping the sun. Worshiping the sun. <laughs> you, you see that? Yeah, yeah. Yes. On the, yeah, the first day of the week, they're, they're worshiping the sun. Right? Which was created on the fourth day and they're breaking the fourth commandment. And guess what? In the book of Revelation, chapter 16, the Bible tells us that the fourth plague shall be the what plague? The plague of the sun. And it's going to scorch men with intense fire. That's what God says. That's the fourth plague. Is that before it goes dark? Oh no, that's before Jesus comes. That's the plague, the seven last plagues. This is the darkness. The, the darkness is plague number five. Yes. yes. Now here's the thing. I want you to go to what book did I tell you guys to go to? Ephesians chapter five. I want you to start reading from verse number twenty-two. Somebody read. What does it say? Oh, can I read? Sure. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. Uh huh. Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as to the Lord. And what's the next verse? Husbands. Love your wives, right? Therefore, or which which one is that? Oh, Keep reading. for the husband, for the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church. Aha! Uh -huh. So what do you get from that? The relationship between a husband and a wife is likened to Christ and the church, right? Now you can keep reading if you if you so choose to, but the Bible is telling us that a church is uh, is symbolic to a woman. We can clearly see that this this is not a literal woman. Is it a literal woman who's clothed with the sun and the moon and the stars? No. I want you now to go to the book of Daniel chapter 12 and read verses 3. There. That was Ephesians 1? That was Ephesians chapter 5. We have Daniel right now. Now we're, go, yes, Daniel. And I want, you also have to read Daniel chapter 5, verses 3. I gotta find Daniel. Alright, I'm done. Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? Okay. Book of Daniel? Yep. Yeah, Daniel chapter yes. 12, 3 says, Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. Those who turn many to righteousness, like the stars from heaven. Uh huh. What did the Bible just tell us? Those who are what? Oh, verse, was it? what? verse 3 of Daniel, Daniel chapter 12. 12. Oh. Read that. Yeah. I thought it was 5. Again? Oh, We're going fast. We are going fast. We are on a speed. We are, we are identifying this woman and we are going to explore some more hidden gems. So, do you remember? What, the, what, what, did, what did the Bible just tell us? Those who are wise, it says, they that be wise, in the King James, it says, they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the <coughs> firmament. In order to shine as bright as the firmament, then that means that you are clothed with, with what? The sun, the, the sun, the moon, and the stars. Do you see that? Did the Bible just tell us? The Bible is its, its, is its own interpreter. So, we 
So if you are a wise, that means God just promised us that we are going to shine just like the stars. So who does this bride actually represent? The church. The church. It represents us. And then it goes on to say, And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. You see, the devil knows that God wants to make us more beautiful and more brighter and shine as the, as the luminaries of the heavens, right? Mm -hmm. So what does the devil say? Why wait for future glory when you can have it now? You can be a celebrity. You can be a star. Look, look, star. you have a star on Hollywood Boulevard. People can see your name written there in stone. Well, guess what? They, they trample over your name mm -hmm. when they're walking. <laughs> the devil is making them... You see how the people are? They are giving up their, their souls just so that they can be able to have their names trampled upon by other people? Does it make any sense? No, it doesn't. Now, when we go back to Revelation chapter 12, we can see that this, this woman is actually a church. It's a virgin church, but what we'll find is that she actually becomes pregnant. Alright? So, go to verse number 2 of Revelation chapter 12. I'm going to start reading from here, alright? And it says, and she being, well, actually, let me tell you guys also, the 12 stars, the 12, the 12 stars, how many, how many tribes of, of Israel? 12. 12. 12. These, are, these, are, these are, this is the church again. You know, this is the, the, the yes. So, and, and she, this is beginning from verse 2 now, and she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having how many heads? Seven, Seven heads and how many, how many horns? Ten horns. Ten horns. And how many crowns? Seven. Seven crowns upon his heads, right? And he still drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them where? Mm -hmm. To the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now, do you guys remember what this was? Yeah. All right. What was this? Which, what was this dragon? Okay. Who is this dragon? Rome. Satan. All right. Yes, the dragon is Satan or Rome. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to spend too much time explaining that. Verse number six. Um, well, I'll skip verse number five. I'll go to verse number six. It says, "And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God." that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. How many days is that? Three and a half. Three and a half years we did the conversion. One thousand two hundred and sixty days. That's basically what the Bible is telling us. Mm -hmm. Alright? Now, we found out that this actually is the period of, known as what? The dark, the dark ages. You remember? Mm -hmm. You sure you remember? Mm -hmm. Alright. Do what? The period of the 1260 years. You don't know. You forgot already? Right? Before the Reformation. <laughs> Alright. Are you guys clear on this or should I? I, I, can, I can go ahead and I can clear it up for you guys. Who wants me to clear it up? Do you, got, do you want me to clear this up or no? You're good. Like, I don't mind. But no, I'm asking, do you understand? Because I don't want you to be lost. Okay. Alright, I'll clear, I'll clear the air. So we see a dragon. Alright. Alright. So we see a dragon standing before the woman. Again, this woman, she is the same woman who is clothed with the sun, moon, and stars, right? Okay. So how many heads does the, does the dragon have? Seven. Seven, Seven heads. heads. And how many, cr and how many uh, horns? Ten. Ten horns. And how many uh, crowns? Seven crowns. Seven crowns, right? I want you guys to make careful observation now, alright? So, we see a dragon. Seven. What color is the dragon? Fire red. Okay, he is, it is a red dragon, right? With seven heads. Ten horns. Yeah, Seven ten horns. And seven crowns on the heads. And what did this dragon want to do? Okay, the dragon wanted to devour the child that was going to be born of this virgin woman, right? Mm. So this dragon, and I, and I even asked the question, isn't it interesting that the dragon 
obviously, who's bigger, the woman or the dragon? The dragon. Of course, and he has seven heads. So why does he not devour the woman, and then he can just devour her child, but rather he decides that he wants to devour just the child? Yes, he wants to kill the child. Yeah. Not the woman, but he wants to to, to, want to, to to kill the child. Who do you know that when he was born, the king wanted to have him killed? Moses. Jesus. Well, Moses too, but Jesus was the one who... King Herod made a decree that, how many, that all children should be killed, remember? Mm -hmm. And how old were these children? Uh, two years old and under. Every child who is two years old and under, all must be killed. Only male child, but not the, not the girl, not the, not the female child, right? They were all to be left alone, but every boy child that's two years old and under, all had to be killed. He was not after the women, not after the mothers, but after the children only, right? Women meant nothing back then, only to have babies. Uh-huh, but here's the thing. So the king... What passed a decree to have them killed. Now, which kingdom was the one that that passed the decree? Which kingdom was in was ruling at the time? Mm -hmm. It was the kingdom of Rome. Rome is the same kingdom that that wanted Jesus Christ killed, right? Because they feared that he was going to become a charismatic leader or a or or a, or a leader who was going to come with the sword and he's going to rule. He's going to lead all of Israel to battle and conquer them and all of that stuff. That's, that's their carnal understanding before. Mm -hmm. Now here's the thing. Jesus survived. The Bible goes on to say that this male child was caught up to who? To God. Yeah, where are you reading? Verse number 5. Verse 5, chapter mm -hmm. 12. Yeah, verse number 5. Right? You guys, let me know if you guys are stuck. Because this stuff can be heavy. Mm -hmm. Alright? Yep. Um, so here's the thing. It was the kingdom of Rome that stood, that was ready to devour this child, right? Now here's the thing. You know how the Bible says it has ten, ten horns? How many heads do you think have the ten horns? How many? How many heads have the, how many, how seven. many? Do how you many think heads every, have the ten horns? Yeah, do you, know, do you know the Bible says you have seven heads and ten horns? Yeah. My question to you is simple. Maybe it was those those ten horns. Head has more than... Maybe it did have ten, ten heads. No, no, no. It has, seven, it has seven heads. So there were more horns on another head? No, I'm asking you guys. So what each you guys head is, is. Each, do you think each head some, has some horns or yeah. no? You think so? Maybe seven some heads. Has more. Yeah, seven heads, ten horns. Okay, I'll give, you, I'll give you a hint. This is Revelation chapter 12, right? Yeah. Well, this is the first description that we actually get where the Bible talks about seven heads and ten horns. Of a creature but before that the Bible mentioned seven heads I mean not seven heads but the Bible mentions about ten horns where is that at Daniel, In Daniel book, yeah. go back uh, hold revelation and go to Daniel but horns can be anyway look at the elephant that one's here Daniel what Daniel chapter 7 I so here's the thing. Remember, if you go to Daniel chapter 7, I want you guys to take a look at this. Verse number 7. Yes, Daniel chapter 7, verse 7. It says, Joshua, do you want to read it? After this I saw in the night vision, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, exceedingly strong. It had huge iron teeth, it was devouring breaking in pieces, and trampling the residue with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Ah, you see that? How many heads does this beast have? Ten horns. Huh? Ten horns. How many heads does this beast have, I ask? How many heads? How many heads? Does it, does it say anything about seven heads? No. But it does say that it has how many horns? Yeah. Ten horns. And usually where are horns situated? Oh, on a head. On a head, right? Mm -hmm. So that means that this creature had ten horns where? On one head. On its head. Oh, do you see that? So just one head. It's one head ten that horns. has the ten horns. Yeah. 
one head has ten horns. It's one head. This is this is the same beast here. It has it has ten horn ten horns on one head. Now it's interesting that if you go to verse eight of Daniel, we see a little horn that comes up, and you remember what that little horn did? Mm -hmm. Blast. It blasts him, but it uprooted how many? It uprooted three horns, right? Mm -hmm. So, and it was given a mouth speaking great words and blasphemies, right? Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? So, when we actually go to the book of Revelation chapter 12, again, don't close Daniel, just put something there, all right? Because we're going to go back and forth. When you go to Revelation chapter 12, what we will see is that the dragon has seven heads and ten horns, and upon the horns were ten crowns. All right? Now, here's the thing. I would like to, I'm going to put a pause on this because we need to go to Revelation chapter 13, and then that's going to connect the pieces, all right? Yeah. That's so, so that we're going to hold off there. And make sure that Daniel is open. Daniel 7 is, is just, you just put a marker on Daniel chapter 7. Because we're going to be going back and forth and flipping back and forth, alright? Now, if we continue reading, the Bible tells us from verse number 7 of Revelation chapter 12, it talks about the great war in heaven, right? Mm -hmm. Now, all of us already read that before. From verse number 7 to verse number 9, it talks about the great war that began in heaven. And Michael fought against the dragon. Right? And then the dragon was cast out, and the Bible gives us the, the, the identity of the dragon as the, as the devil, the serpent of old, right? the deceiver, who was cast to the earth. Right? Mm -hmm. Now here's the thing, when we, go back, when we go now down to verse number 12 of Revelation 12, this is after the dragon was cast out to the earth, after Satan is cast out, then the Bible says, Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth, right? Um, for the devil is come down unto you, having great what? Yeah. Wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time, right? And when the dragon saw that he was cast out, uh, cast unto the earth, he persecuted the what? Woman. The woman which brought forth the yeah. man child or the male child. Again, what is the woman? The church. Do, do you see that? The church that, the, that Jesus came through, right? Satan began to persecute that church. What began to happen after the, after the resurrection of Christ? Do you, did, you remember, did you know that Satan was the rightful owner of the, of the earth after men sinned? Do you remember that? Do you remember in the book of Job... Yeah. Satan used to appear before God, and he was the rep he was rep he represented the earth, mm -hmm. and God would ask him, introduce yourself. Where do you come from, Satan? Where what what was his answer? For I I come from the earth, from walking to and fro and up and down on the earth. Okay, God already know that. Of course, but remember, this is there's a meeting just, in heaven. So it's more. It's Adam more. Was, he yes. Knew where they were. Huh? Yes. Just like he knew where Adam and Eve was, he knew where they were. Oh. It's, it's more. He was not invited, but he just showed up because he wanted to test God. The thing is, there's a meeting in heaven. Mm -hmm. All of the unfallen worlds have shown up. So when everybody introduces themselves for uh, for the sake of everybody else, that they may know, okay, I come from the earth. I come from this world. I come from that. Right. That's what we. That's the scenery that we see in in Job. But Satan. After the resurrection of Christ, who was now the rightful owner of the earth? Jesus. So now was Satan now able to go up again? No. Nope. So what happened to Satan? Cast to the earth. Mm -hmm. He was bound. Right? Go nowhere. Now, here's the thing. When you read the Revelation, you may get confused because you will read that, wait, this just happened after the fall, the, the great war in heaven. So then you might think, wait, so then that means that there's a great war in heaven after the resurrection? No, that war took place long before Jesus came on this earth. Right? But the, and the devil was, but the devil, the, 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 the devil lost all authority and was, and, and was cast. Yeah. Who's It's not our car. It's okay, just leave it. All right. So now, here's the thing. The Bible then says in verse 14, And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, 
that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a what? Time and? Times and? Half a time. Do you see that? So, altogether, that's how many years? Three and a half years. That's what the Bible just tells us here. So this woman is given wings to flee from who? To flee from the dragon and to stay in the wilderness in a place of hiding for three and a half years. If you convert three and a half years into days, what do you get? 1,260 uh -huh, 260 days. And also we see that the 1,260 days is actually also compared to, it, it actually parallels to verse 6. When the Bible says the woman fled into the wilderness where she had, she had a place prepared for her, for, that she would stay there for 1,260 days. Right? Now here's the thing. Verse 15, the Bible says, And the serpent cast out of his mouth, what? Water. Right? As what? Like a flood. Like a flood. Water as a flood after the who? After the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away by the what? Flood. What's a flood? A lot of water. Okay. All right. What what do you do with water? Shower, drink, swim. You drink water. You swim in water. Anna, you guys, keep it down, all right? Let me ask you a question, Anna. What do you do with water? What do you do with water? What do you do with water? Do you drink it? Yeah. Ah, water's good, right? You have to drink it every day. Good. So, make note of this. You drink water, right? Water, you, you can swim, obviously. You water your plants and all of that stuff. Hydrate strong. Yeah. Now, question number two. What do you do with a flood? Die. You die. Do you see a flood and be like, yeah? <laughs> when you see water, when you see water, oh yes, water. All right, but when you see a flood, you run away from a flood because the flood wants to do what to you? The flood wants to kill you. We're not personifying it. We're not personifying. We're not. I'm not. I'm not giving a human characteristic to the flood. But a flood is a destroyer. Mm -hmm. It destroys houses, right? Yeah. So now let's ask the question: What exactly is a flood according to the Bible? <laughs> a flood comes from what? Water. From water. And what stirs up the water? The wind. Ah. Do you remember where? The waters were stirred before? Ooh, I'm trying right to think. There. I'm it's trying to right think. There. Sounds like, sounds like, uh, I know. Sounds, sounds like, like Daniel. Yeah, that's right. Sounds like Daniel. Uh, Daniel chapter what? Daniel chapter uh, 4. Chapter 8. No, chapter, chapter 7. Oh, it's chapter 6. Five. Daniel chapter 7, verse 1. with the goats, right? No, no. The lamb? No. Daniel chapter 7. Go to verse number 3. The four beasts? Alright, baby. Read it. What does it say? I don't remember nothing. Daniel chapter beasts. 7. Oh, man, man, man. This the Actually, beasts. read, okay, read, read the verse before. Read verse 2. Verse 2? Daniel chapter 7, verse 2. Oh. Still is going to read it. Loud and clear. Daniel spoke, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven were stirring up the great sea. Pause. I saw in my vision by night the four what? The four winds stirred up the, 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 the great sea. The four winds of heaven. So when they stir up the, the, the heavens, I mean the waters, what happens? You get turbulence, right? the symbol of the sea? Yes, we did. We did. Go to Revelation chapter 17 now. We're gonna get what? Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Revelation. 17? Yes. Go to Revelation chapter seventeen. That tells us the meaning of what the waters mean. Oh. Revelation chapter seventeen, verses fifteen. Fifteen. What does it say, Yuasa? Behold, I come as a thief. Wait. Is 
No, 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 Revelation chapter 17. Oh, okay. so, oh you also, I mean, just one minute. Oh, whoops. Chapter 17, what? Chapter 17, verse 15. And he said to me, the waters which you saw where the harlot sits are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. Ah, the waters which the whore sitted upon are what? Peoples, multitude, nations, tongues. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. That's what the waters represent in Bible prophecy. Because this great sea is written in... Now think about this. Oh, okay. That means the great sea are peoples. Yeah. They are people. Nation. When, the when the wind stirs, what does the wind represent? Mm -hmm. You don't know what the wind represents? Go to Revelation chapter 7. You already there? Oh, no, no, no. You're not there? So, uh, I will tell you right now. I believe right, it would be in verse number. Verse number. All right, actually, yes. After these things, I saw four angels standing on four corners of the earth, holding Seven, four winds of the one. air, that the wind should not blow on the earth. This climate That's it. Do you see that? Uh, Revelation chapter 7, I mean, I mean chapter 7, verse 1, the Bible says, And after these things, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the what? The four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the... So what is the symbol? Tell me, keep reading, it tells me. That the wind should not blow on the earth. On the sea or any tree. Uh-huh. Till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. That means the angels are holding the four winds, which means they are protecting the earth. They are holding back the calamities and strife from falling upon the earth until God's people are sealed. Do you understand? So then what this is telling us is that the winds represent strife. Strife? Yes. Calamities, tribulations, bad things. Wars. So now when the winds stir up the waters and it causes up it causes a it causes a, a flood, that flood is coming to get you. If you go back to Revelation chapter 12, listen to what the, the serpent does. In verse number 15, and the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Verse 16, And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth, and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Did you catch that? So what is the earth? You know, you know a serpent. Huh? Where did you just read that from? Verse number uh, 16 of Revelation chapter 12. So the woman went into hiding. The dragon Trying to persecute the woman. I think I'm just gonna have to listen. Because I'm gonna be most of the numbers in the Yes? Yeah? We're going back too many too many Bible verses. Yeah, yes. but I'm just gonna listen. Alright. But are you lost so far? Are you lost so far? Or you... She look as she's so tired. She looks tired. It's okay. Here we are. Okay. This is a heavy subject, you really who's lost so far? Me, I'm excited. What are you Are you guys lost? Are you yes. lost so far? You understand? The only problem is the thing because they gotta go back and forth. Me, I just click here. Yeah, I'm, I'm, go I'm, 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 hel I'm helping you guys. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm toning it down a bit. So here's the thing: the serpent spit something out of his mouth. You guys know that there are snakes that spit, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. You know there are snakes that yeah, spit, mm -hmm. right? They, they stand up and they spit, mm -hmm. and they are excellent at targeting. The Bible just told us that we're now that this was a spitting serpent. But it spat out of its mouth, not poison, but water that came as flood. So, mm -hmm. he spat out the people. We're going to get there right now. We're going to get there. So, here's what, you, what, we, what we're seeing. He turned the people against he com the people. In other words, can the serpent command, can the serpent, can a snake choose when to release the venom? Yes or no? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, that means that the serpent is in control of the, of the venom, right? Mm -hmm. uh, all the serpent has to do is just say, go. Alright, and it goes. Right? Who 
is behind the kingdom of Rome again? The dragon. And the dragon is who? The devil. The devil. Well, the devil is the one. Yes, look, you are right. The popes are actually the devil is the one who gave them the authority. He gave them power. And that's revealed to us in the next chapter, in Revelation chapter 13. Now, here's the thing. We see a spitting serpent, right? Who was his target? Not too much confusion on the people. Serpent and dragon. It, it's all one and the same. I'm going to save you the problem. Serpent, dragon, same, same, same. Don't be confused, all right? All right? But there's some instances where it's confused. Yes, there are. There are. But for this one, for this one, I'm just telling. I'm just I'm, for the sake of illustration, it does tie in. So here's the thing. The serpent. Who was his main target? The church. church. The woman. The woman. The woman was given what? Wings, right? Wings of an eagle that she should fly away where? Into the mountains. Into the mountains or into the wilderness to go into hiding for how long? Three and a half years. Three and a half years that she should hide for. Right? In verse number six, the Bible told us that she was to be in a place of hiding where she would receive food and she would be fed and taken, be taken care of for 1,260 days. Right? That is the exact same as the three and a half years. So now, when the serpent sped the flood, what happened? The earth opened. Okay. And, and then the flood was able to, instead of the flood catching up to the woman, the flood was all gone into the, into the, into the, under the earth. And the woman went into hiding. So then, did the serpent get her? No. He missed her. But she went into hiding. Think about this. This is what this is the truth now. After Jesus ascended to heaven, persecution came upon the church. The early church was persecuted. Nero persecuted the church. In the year 64 AD, I believe it's in I think well he Nero I think committed suicide in 68 AD. But I believe in yeah, in 64 AD, Nero that's after Jesus yes right yes after Jesus ascended to heaven Nero persecuted the Christians by blaming them for the fires that took place where in Rome Nero also tried to burn the Bibles right which kingdom was doing all of this Rome, Rome was doing it do you see that Rome was the one that was burning the Bibles and Rome was killing the, ch the Christians and Rome was feeding them to beasts. They were being fed alive. They were, they were, they were tied on, on stakes like this and then bears and lions and tigers were, were opened to go and feed on them and bite them alive. The early Christians suffered much persecution. But you know what? The more that they did this, the more that they, they killed the Christians, guess what? The more people became even more faithful to death. That's the early church. That's the woman. Eventually, the persecution went on. The devil tried his best using which kingdom again? The Roman, the Roman Empire. It eventually led to the papacy. The papacy was established, fu fully, firm, fully established, by the year 321. no 321 AD Wait. Constantine united church and state That's basically. well yes 321 they they began to now this is where now the devil he tried to kill her couldn't do it so now he tried to d unite with them so now he stopped the persecutions a bit right from 321 AD that same kingdom that was once killing the, the Christians now they united with the Christians and then what began to happen? The Christians, they began to calm down. And when they calmed down, this would go up until what? 538 AD, the clock would begin. The papacy would establish full, would receive now full dominance. And it was the one that was ruling now the affairs of the entire Ro Ro uh, Roman Empire. And by the time 538 arrived, three kings were plucked out. And what were they? These are the three kingdoms, the Herulis, the Ostrogoths, and the Vandals. These were the three kingdoms that were eliminated. They no longer exist today. The little horn was the one that uprooted them. Now here's the main, main point. 
This kingdom reigned from 538 AD all the way until what time? Do you remember? No. Okay, I'll draw. 1787. You are right, close, you're close. 1776. <laughs> Wait, I don't know the question. Like, you are both evil to you know this. Wait, so what did you question? The papacy ruled from 538 AD until what time? Oh. Wait, I got it, man. Oh. I don't tell me. Um, 17. Is it 17? 1736? 1784. Wait, 17. 1785. 16. I know it's somewhere 17 some, but I don't know what else. 17. Oh, see, I knew it. No problem. I was just joking. Of course I know it. I don't know why. You should have said it. Look, here's the thing. The papacy ruled from 538 AD to 1798 AD. Mm. How many years is that? Three and, and a half years. Two thousand thirty. One two six zero. Three and a half years. This is one thousand. Three and a half years. Two hundred and sixty years. Do you no. see that? If it was days, but each day is a year, right? Each day is a year. Yes. That's this is the 1,260 literal years, mm -hmm. right? So here's the thing. That's the time between that where they yes. were together if now with the Christians. This is the, the Dark Ages. This is the time of this the Dark Ages. The papacy joins the, the, no, they, they joined before. That long ago. Hmm? They they joined they joined the from the get, They began or they began to join since 321 AD with Constantine the Great. Oh, All right. Now let's now check this out. Check this out. During this year, what happened? The church went into spiritual darkness. In other words, it seems as if the light of the, of the church was dimming away, right? Mm -hmm. Is that they what they went, literally went down underground? They the went into hiding and many of, the, many of the Christians who they had gone to worship privately they were even in in under in, under, in caverns, living in underground caverns, mm -hmm. right? And the same thing is gonna repeat itself. It's about to repeat. Now here's the thing that we have to understand about this timeline. How did that? So what 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 what's the deal with the serpent spitting the thing? Well, through the kingdom of Rome, the serpent. Who's the serpent? The, the devil. Satan, the devil. Yeah. The serpent was able to whisper to his main chief guy, the Pope, or through the government. And what did they do? They began to send military, right? They were sending the military and, and, and the chariots, right? Mm -hmm. To go and search who? The Christians. The Christians, so that they can kill them. Again, this is now a multitude of people. An army. Now, what does an army want to do? That when you see an army, do you want to go and embrace them? Mm -hmm. Not people, no. Not sure you run away. Right? Do you see that? That's, that's the flood. That the, that the serpent oh, okay. was... You see it? The, the, okay, the armies are now the flood now. Right? That's, the, that's the flood. Mm -hmm. That went to... That was basically being commanded oh, okay. to go and seek to the go people. And get them. Oh. The church was being seeked out, but they went into, into spiritual darkness. They also were, they also were in, in, in hiding. But then the Bible goes on to say in, in verse 17, because the woman is no longer there. The woman went into hiding and she was lost. But then something happens in verse 17. What does the Bible say in verse 17? It says, in the same chapter, chapter 12. Chapter 17. Chapter, Revelation chapter 12, verse 17 now. Yes, and the dragon was enraged or wrought with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed or her offspring, right? Who keep, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Do you see how it switched now? The devil tried to attack the, church, the woman, he failed. 
time. Now he's like, okay, I failed, I missed, I, I didn't, I didn't get you the first time. Now I'm going after your remnant. That means they went into such a spiritual darkness to the point where now how many are the ones that are still holding the flame? Just a remnant. Do you know what a remnant is? A remnant is just leftovers. Leftovers, tiny bits. So the devil is now angry at the very small few who are still keeping the flame burning. Do you know where that flame can be found right now? In places like these. You can go ahead and search, you can go to the churches. That's not where the remnant is. The remnant are scattered. These are the scattered gems of God, of, of God Almighty. Heaven's precious gems are the remnant. And they are scattered seeds. Does it make sense so far? The remnant would actually make itself known. They would come out after this period. Check this out. Let's go to the Revelation. Comes after, this after 1798, the, the, remnant, the remnant is revealed. The remnant is revealed. You guys should know this, man. Go to Revelation chapter 13 now. It. All right. Okay, now I'm getting lost on this part. Which one? Hmm. Wait, this one? No, but right. Maybe when you continue. About the remnant? Oh yeah, no. I, I, I. That that one is actually going to be cleared up with this with this next chapter. Are you guys? Do you guys need a break? No. You yeah, guys. This children maybe they're getting tired. Who they're needs a break? Time. You guys don't need a break. Every time we have a break. Huh? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, this is this is. You can just duck, yeah. All the Christians between that time. Yes, they went into. But then they changed his mind. Now he's gonna go through to the remnant. Because at this point here, they went. The woman went into hiding, to the point where her trace was nearly lost. That it's almost like the, the, the devil could not find her, yeah. but all he can find it's are the bits and pieces of her seed. Think about this. Does a woman have a seed? Yes. No. No. A woman doesn't have no, a seed. Yeah. We have a woman. Oh, you're saying that the man has a seed? It's the man that has a seed. So this is just just to, just it's just it's just to just to eliminate it's just to eliminate just to eliminate that this is a literal woman. They don't do nothing unless their seed is in front Okay. Now check this out. All right. Now we're going to Revelation chapter 13. All right, Josh. Revelation chapter 13. What does the Bible say? 